Hello everyone, this is Scott from the AlexDiction.com and I will be giving you some tips with the popular plugin called W3 Total Cash. W3 Total Cash is probably the most well known and most well renowned caching plugin on the market. However, it's also the one that most people mess up on the most. So I'm going to give you some tips on things to avoid doing with when it comes to using this plugin. We're going to go over the different caching modules and this is where the main errors lie. Number one, the page cache. A lot of time you'll see people who have like opcode or memcache set up on their server, which is really smart because it's optimized and it will run things from memory as opposed to just doing it from the disk, which is a little bit slower. However, that being said, uh, page cache should always be searched from the disk. And the reason is, is having a full size page run from memory is actually going to clog up your resources, especially if you're on a heavier website. This can be avoided fairly easily because you don't even need you don't need every caching module. Most people who use this plugin turn on page cache, minify, database, object caching, and you don't necessarily need all of them. In fact, in most cases, I don't think you should be using them all of them at all. But people still still try and do so. So you can do a couple things here or there that will actually narrow down your choices. The main thing to look at is if you're using an e-commerce website or something that uses a lot of database queries then you should be using a, the database cache. That's the only real time you should be doing it. If you're using a social networking like BuddyPress and you're focusing heavily on it then I would recommend the object cache. Object caching is also recommended by the uh, BuddyPress development team so that's a typically a good sign. You don't want to use database caching and object caching because it's a waste of resources and you'll actually probably be slowing your website down. Typically, you can, if you want to run both at the same time, you're going to want to exclude certain pages. For instance, if you have a store and an e-commerce part, a store and a social networking part, you'll wish to run the database caching typically on the store section or something that's generating a lot of queries and then on the <clears throat> on the buddy press side you'll want to do uh, object caching um, for those two I actually think you can run them fine from memory most of the times though you just want to run disk database caching and object caching can be run because they're thing they, they're mostly just the queries and things that are signaling to the database and those can be run from memory because they're not very large and they can be improved like that their load time will be much faster as opposed to running them from a disk even if you're using an SSD memory will still be faster uh, and the minification is also one that I see a lot of people mess up on and it's because they'll run it from memory again and the problem is, is when you have full sized minification or you have minified large files they can cause things to slow down even more because it can still use a lot of memory in transferring it therefore I still recommend running it from disk and if you're using a VPS or a server that has an SSD you won't really notice any slowdown and your resources will be better off I want to run through these different options real quick. Um, there's default and there's HTML tidy. HTML tidy is there, but it's also something that can break things. It's prone to breaking. And that is because it's very, very, now I wouldn't say deadly, but it's a very, um, I wouldn't, it's just prone to breaking things. But um, we're going to refresh this website. And I'm going to view source. And I'm willing to bet that I forgot to turn it on. So we'll just go into the minification real quick. And here we go. Hide comments, clean. See, it. if you do this, I'm just going to warn you that there's chances that you will break things and breaking things is not fun. Alright, here's the site and here's what happened after HTML tidy went through. It's broken the CSS entirely but if you look on the upside yeah, I probably, oh I did that clean option, lame but um, 
yeah, it's it's broken a lot of things that should not be broken. But it's super powerful at cleaning things out, and it would probably reduce your overall load time greatly because there's not going to be a whole lot of things that aren't minified. But there's a lot of things that are apparently broken. See, it's just too strong for this website. You can ignore certain comments, um, stems, but that's only for like Google Ads and other things. It's really not that useful. In fact, Google Ads don't even need that comment, so I don't even know why it matters. Um, another interesting thing is you can change the minification uh, tool for CSS and JavaScript. Most of the time, people won't use this because they don't know how. I haven't set it up because I'm redoing this website, but um, there are some different ones that you can look at. I always recommend keeping the default for HTML minifier. But um, you have the UI compressor and the closure compressor. If you come over here, you have the UI compressor and the CSS tidy. UI compressor is something that's actually used in uh, auto optimize, which is pretty much known to not break things. The only problem is, is it's JavaScript. It, well, it's not JavaScript. It runs things. It's a Java, basically a Java applet. It'll run Java code, which is not the fastest and can slow things down even more. But you can install it, and there's tutorials online how to do it. So I won't be walking you through it this time. But I recommend using this as opposed to just grabbing auto optimize. Why? Because what happens is auto optimize generates a ton, a ton of cache trials. Because instead of doing something smart and ignoring the inline, it brings it all in. So if you have a website with several thousand pages, it's going to have probably that same code a thousand times over. That's clearly an exaggeration, but if you have one part of the website that's like your, you have a blog post one and then blog post 2 and they pretty much have the exact same that's going to be two different cache files because it pulls it all in and that's just not smart um, I'm going to give you some quick recommended settings for this if you haven't installed well good for you but I don't have it installed so I can't really show you the exact process but I recommend uh, all JavaScript should be deferred especially in the footer. If you can't get it to be deferred, try doing it in the head. If it's still not going to work, then just load it blocking. But I don't like doing things blocking. You can also change the way that the files are loaded, which is actually not as useless as some people think. And the reason for that is, is things like jQuery. Look at the structure of your website. Look at what JavaScript files are running first and try to put it in that exact same order. Most of the time then, you won't have any files that are broken unless they're broken because of the minification, in which case try doing combine only. Because that's basically what auto optimize does is it takes it, it looks at the full it looks at the structure of the website and what JavaScript files come, and then it tries to put them in that same order. The reason is because some JavaScript or other files actually need to be run in a specific order in order for them to function. So things like jQuery are going to work without a doubt if you put them first, which is what you should do on every website. But if I look at mine, um, and I look for just JavaScript, and it starts with jQuery, then it goes bam, 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 bam. I would try and put it in that same relative order. And the reason for that is, is then things will probably work as opposed to being broken. I'd follow it down, and I wouldn't include the Google Ads, clearly, but I'd scroll all the way down to the bottom. And all of that would be combined and I would try to minify them. If it doesn't want to minify, that's fine. We're not going to try. But I also recommend you try using the UI compressor. And the only reason that I say that is because the UI compressor is incredibly accurate and it's really strong. It's not prone to breaking anything and it always gets the job done. The thing with CSS, most of the time your CSS is not going to break. I'm just going to say that right now. It will not break. If you're ever going to do an add import handling, never do bubble, only do process. Process actually kind of processes the file and puts it into the actual style sheet. And of course, if you want to use the UI compressor again, by all means you can do so. Run the files through there, and it should come out working. Um, you can use the closure compiler, but I don't really recommend it. It's not as... It, it's basically like a worse version of the UI compressor, but for some 
very particular websites it may work so thank you very much for watching I'm gonna keep doing some videos like this if you haven't figured out yet that my uh, other website my uh, minification not my minification I keep talking about websites my antivirus testing videos will help to come back at a later time because my machine is broken so thank you very much for watching please stay tuned for the next video if you have any questions comments or concerns let me know thank you very much for watching and goodbye